may be seated. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Word and Table Easter service. We're so happy to have you here with us. He is risen. He has risen indeed. This morning, I'm going to keep the announcement short. Uh, on your pew, pile, uh, pew pad, we have them in your pews, but there is not enough to go all the way to the back with all the pews. So I'm going to ask you today that once it gets on the back row, gets finished with theirs, to pass it backwards to each person so they can all register their attendance today. Also, on your announcements today, we've got a lot of things coming up next weekend because of Flower Town, so pay attention to the parking stuff and what's going on there, and then read the rest of your bulletin and that should cover everything I would have to say today, unless there's any other special emphasis that I need to be aware of. Who's going to preach today? Oh, I'd like to know. There he is. Don't do that to me, brother. I look at empty seats, and I feel, uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> well, anyway, welcome. Let's, let's worship today and really enjoy what this day means to us as followers of Jesus Christ. Stand and greet your neighbor as we get ready to lead you into another worship song. Today, this day, that we celebrate Resurrection Day, is the most historical, significant day in all of humanity. Today, humanity has a chance. Today, humanity has a Savior. And we, when we sang today, do you see what I see? Our world is always looking for something to see, to point to hope and the promise. The irony of our faith is we look at a grave and don't want to see anything in it. It is empty. Our grave is empty. Our Lord is risen. Over 500 witnesses of the risen Lord after they saw him die on the cross. Boy, that's something to hang on to for your faith. Let us worship him today, our risen Lord. child there's no need to cry stand up on your feet now lift your head up high don't wait till tomorrow lay down your sorrow freedom is here today wipe away those tears child i put down your shame oh i see an empty grave Hear the heavens waking, angels in jubilation. That song's been rolled away. I 
feel the darkness breaking. I bet the devil's shaking. Somebody celebrate. Those tears, child, there's no need to cry. Stand up on your feet now, lift your head up high. Wait till tomorrow, lay down your sorrow, freedom is here today. Wipe away those tears, child. It's all reversed. The apple is cursed. Three days in the ground. Christ our Lord is risen. Death couldn't hold him. Down. Praise, honor, and glory. We serve a God who defeats death. Amen.
lost without hope with no place to begin your love made a way to let mercy come in when death was arrested of my life being Ash was redeemed, only beauty remained. My orphan heart was given a My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace, so is over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us chains I'm a prisoner no more my shame was a Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had passed. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free. seated while our ushers come forward as we worship the Lord this morning with the giving of our tithes and our offerings. We thank you, Lord, today 
for your blessings, and you have given us so much. Even if all you'd ever done for us was just what you did today and given us new life and a resurrection, that would have been more than enough to follow you and surrender our life to you. And we owe you so much, but Lord, we know we don't give to you because we owe you anything. You did all that for us because you loved us. You did it freely. And so we simply ask this morning, Lord, as you receive our gifts, that they will be used, that your message, that your gospel will be shared with people who've never heard it so that they may understand what a gift this day is and can be in their own lives. Bless it now, Lord, for your work. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. was found on a cross bloodied and broken crimson river flowing down as darkness fell upon Golgotha tortured body wrapped in shroud our messiah lay beneath the ground every curse upon his shoulders with our sin he was adorned Perfect lamb led through the slaughter as a ransom for our souls. One last act and it was finished. Power of sin and veil were torn. On this cross was our victory won. By his love he would
the body of the lamb who had been slain resurrecting like a lion as the stone was rolled away jesus christ now glory come today for our children's moment. Good morning. Hello. Ears. I like that. Bows. Good to see you back. Well, good morning, everybody, and happy Easter. He is risen. Amen. Yeah, it's the good news. We checked the tomb, and it was empty. Um, I want to tell you a short story. <clears throat> My wife and I have two cats, and one of the cats is a black cat, and his name is Blackjack, and he only has one ear. He, um, he had a cancer in his right ear and they had to remove the, the eardrum and all the stuff on the inside so his ear, ear was on the outside sort of flops down but this ear is real good now he likes to go out early in the morning so he gets me up and I'll let him out at 5 15 or 5 30 or so and he'll go out and sniff around the yard to see what animals have been there since he last checked you know checking for uh, lions and tigers and giraffes and uh, raccoons and snakes and something had him this excited this morning I never did figure out what it was but sometimes he likes to go out and sit at the end of the sidewalk by the street now my wife and I have um, some good friends that live on the street across the street and the husband goes to work at 5 30 in the morning and if the cat is out there he will stop and roll his window down and talk to the cat. And I'll tell you, he is not a cat person, but he talks to the cat. Well, this got me curious, so um, I asked the cat one day, I said, what do y'all talk about? <laughs> the cat was cool and never said a mumbling word. He wouldn't tell me. He would not tell me what they talk about. And that reminded me of something else. This is the lesson for us today. There's somebody else that you can always talk to. Any time of the day, anywhere you are, no matter what you're doing. And he will keep your secrets. You can tell him the most awful thing that you're most embarrassed by. You can tell him something you've done wrong. And he will listen to you and he will be glad that you talk to him. Do you know who that is? Jesus. Amen. Here endeth the lesson. Jesus will keep your secrets, just like the cat. He doesn't blab. He's not going to tell mom and dad. He's not going to tell your friends. But you can tell him anything, and he wants to hear from you. He already knows 
but he wants to hear us say it, okay? Well, that is Easter. This is the best year, best day of the year for us, and we will start the calendar cranking again, and we'll be back here again next year. But until then, let's have a short prayer. Dear God, bless this day. Bless these children. Bless this church. May this church be a garden where these children will grow and grow into the <coughs> adult Christians that you need for your world. In the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. good morning, and happy Easter. Christ is risen. Oh, come on, let's do that one more time. Christ is risen. Amen, amen. Let me just say before we go to the Lord in prayer, uh, um, man, there is, this has been a, Holy Week has been a, a week filled with a lot of stuff and a lot of great services and things going on. And I just want to say a special thanks to uh, our, our tech folks and our musicians. You know, Thursday night we had Monday Thursday service, wonderful service. Uh, Friday night was a Tenebrae service. Anybody go to that service? Just raise your hand back there. It was a powerful, powerful service. It had some unique things as far as for the tech people and the musicians, and then, uh, and then we had yesterday, we had two celebrations of life, almost going on at the same time, one in the sanctuary, one in Spell. We also had a, uh, said, uh, had a little service, somebody that was going into the columbarium, and then after, after both those services, those funerals, they had um, receptions for the family and the people from out of town, both in here and in friendship circle. That's a lot going on. And then this morning with uh, our sunrise service. And I know some of the um, worship team came in here and says, where's our equipment? Because some of the equipment for, that for here and some of the tech stuff that goes into spell and the spell service at 8 o'clock was used in the sunrise service. So it's been a great time even with a little, a lot of stretching and a lot of patience of just worshiping God and coming together. So tech folks, musicians, thank you for your patience and everything and for all those who've made this, made this week a special week uh, in Easter, Holy Week in Easter. Let's take a few moments and spend some time in um, quiet and silence as we go to the Lord and then I'll I'll lead us in our pastoral prayer, and then we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, I think of the, the scripture that he is not here, for he is risen. We thank you for the beauty of this day, for the glorious message that all nature proclaims. The Easter lilies where their waxen throats eloquently sing the good news. The birds, so early this morning, which we heard in the, in the uh, sunrise service, impatient to begin their song and every flowering tree and shrub and flaming bush a living proclamation from you oh open our hearts that we may hear you too lead us we pray to the grave that is empty and to the garden of the resurrection that we might meet our risen lord 
and we may never again live as though you were dead. In your presence, restore our faith, our hope, our joy. Grant to us our spirit's refreshment, rest, and peace, and maintain within our hearts an unruffled calm, an unbroken serenity that no storms of life shall be able to take it from us. And from this moment, O living Christ, we ask you to go with us wherever we go and be our companion in all that we do. And may your Holy Spirit move in this place as we already have felt in a mighty way so that our hearts, our souls would be open to your word. And Father, we come to you this morning praying also the prayer that you gave your disciples and us, your church. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our scripture this morning is taken from John, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, would you stand with me as we read the gospel? Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over, looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. And he saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the other cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside, and he saw, and he believed. They still didn't understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking that he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him. I will get him, Jesus said to Mary. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. <coughs> Go instead to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples <coughs> with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. <coughs> you may be seated.
Have you ever got lost? I mean, really lost? <laughs> I see a lot of heads going, yep, I have got lost before. Um, I have got lost in big cities. And I got a pretty good, if I can brag just a tiny bit, <clears throat> I got a pretty good internal GPS. I have got lost in, <clears throat> when I was in the Pentagon, my first six months there, I got lost many times. If I had to go to a meeting, I'd give myself like an extra 45 minutes to figure out how to get there. <laughs> By the way, there's 25,000 people working that building every day. <laughs> they get lost too. Sometimes I think that big building that's white a few blocks away, there are, a lot of people are lost there. <clears throat> I was talking about the capital, by the way. <laughs> but I mean lost. You ever been in fog and it's so bad that you can't hardly see in front of you? I mean, it's just bad. And it's really, it's horrible if you're driving a car and that fog's that way. Matter of fact, I think it was last fall, around November, December, somewhere in the Midwest, I saw there was this, this huge fog bank and it was on an interstate, I don't remember which one, and there was like 60 to 100 cars ran into each other because of the fog. If you don't have good navigational aids, and if you're in an aircraft, it can be very deadly to be in a fog like that. Matter of fact, they say that's probably what happened to JFK Jr. and his wife when they crashed into the sea because of the fog and you didn't have good navigational aids. If you're in a boat, I can't even imagine being in a boat and a fog coming in, not knowing which way to go. But, you know, probably one of the more dangerous fogs that we experience is the fog in life. Have you ever felt a fog that you felt like Every scene, everything, you can't see what's going on. You seem to be a little bit in the despair and disillusion. And you're thinking, my goodness, where am I? Where's God? Where's the hope? Can you imagine? Sounds like a good title for a song. Can you imagine those disciples They had seen Jesus raise the dead. They had seen him cure folks of sickness and illness. They had seen him do miraculous things, feeding the thousands. <coughs> Yet, they saw him at the cross, died this horrible death. And can you imagine on that Easter morning or that that holy saturday they're going what is going on i can i can't even imagine the fog that they were in it was not only then that they were in a fog but jesus told them jesus told them this was going to happen if you will let me go back in scripture a little bit i'm going to read from matthew a couple verses in matthew first one's from matthew 16 This is verses 21 through 23. From this time, Jesus began to point out to his disciples that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and to suffer many things from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and to be killed, and to be raised up on the third day. And Peter looked at him and said, pulled him aside, and said, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. And he turned to Peter and said, what? Get thee behind me, Satan. For you are a stumbling block to me. If you're not seeing your mind on God's purpose, setting your mind on God's purpose, but men's. So he's telling them. He is telling them to his disciples a little bit, right a few days before he's going to the cross. He says, I'm going to die. And I'm going to rise again on the third day. If you go over to chapter 17, the next chapter over, 
in verses 22 <coughs> through 23, if you have your Bibles, but if not, I'll read it to you. It says, while they are gathered together in Galilee, Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is going to be handed over to men, and they will kill him, and he will be raised on the third day. Again, again he's saying to them, I'm going to die, but I'm going to rise again. They still haven't got it. They're still in the fog. Then you go over a couple more chapters. Chapter 20, verse 17. And Jesus was about to go up to Jerusalem, and he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves. And on the road he said to them, Behold, we're going up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. And they will hand him over to the Gentiles to mock and flog and crucify. And on the third day, he will be raised up. By the way, um, that flogging, that flogging was not a whip with just one talon. It was multiple talons. And they were at different lengths. And, and they had pieces of broken pottery that were nodded in at different intervals in those links and then it was dipped in like goat's blood and when they they would flog jesus or the prisoners they would throw it and they did twist it can you imagine what that would do to human skin that's our lord they did that too so he tells them three times three times he says I'm going to die, and then I'm going to rise again. In Matthew 27, I'm going over another couple chapters here. In verse 63, now that on the next day, this is after he had died, the next day, that is the day that, which was the preparation, the chief priests and the, and the Pharisees gathered together with Pilate. Now listen to this. The disciples didn't get it. They didn't get it. But listen to this. The Pharisees gathered together with Pilate, and they said, Sir, we remember when that deceiver was still alive. He said, After three days, he was, I'm arising. Therefore, give orders for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal him and say to the people, He has risen from the dead. <coughs> and the last deception will be the worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard, go. You have a guard, go and make as secure as you know how. And they went and made the tomb secure with the guard sealing the tomb. You know, by the way, the tomb. The, when it was when the stone was the stone was rolled away, it wasn't for Jesus could get out. It was for people could go in and see that he was not there. He had risen. He had risen indeed. So we get to the point when I mar where we talked about in John twenty there, where Mary comes to the point and she comes and he heard in that scripture she came down. She's going to bring the um, the spices and everything for his body. And she comes down and she goes, oh my goodness, the stone has been rolled away. She didn't look in. She ran back and told, this is John in the Gospel of John, the beloved. She tells John and Peter. And then what happened? You remember in that scripture I read? They, they ran. They ran to the tomb. By the way. You know, again, look who the, who the writer is here, inspired by the scripture. Who outran Peter? <clears throat> John. <laughs> by the way, John gets there first. Don't believe me, go back and look at the scripture. John gets there first. It says he just kind of peered and glanced in. The, the Greek word, by the way, I'm not trying to impress you, but I'm making a point here because I, did, I didn't do very good in three years of Greek in, in seminary. It's blepo. It means he just looked in and he glanced in. It's kind of like what when we stop at a stop sign, we glance both ways to make sure no car is coming. We don't stare. We don't deliberate. We just kind of glance. And that's what he did, John. 
Peter gets there. By the way, John didn't go in. Peter gets there, and what's he do? He goes in. And he kind of examines what's going on. Now, grant you, neither one of them has got it. They're still in the fog. And then what happens? If you remember the text, John walks in. And he sees, he looks, and I think it was like the light bulb was starting to go off. He looks and he says, oh my goodness, the headscarf is there. The linen is here. He's not here. He's not here. By the way, there's a great uh, theologian, um, used to teach at uh, Trinity and Wheaton College. His name was Merrill Tenney, many great books. He did an in-depth study of this and looking at some of the manuscripts. And what he said, he said, he said that the head covering, you know, they wrap their head kind of like a mummy. He said the head covering was probably still like a ball, like a, uh, like a bonnet that was laying there still. If you, know, if, you took the, if you took it off the head, it was still there. He said the linen was probably, it was still there where his body was. In other words, what's the point in make, what's his point in making that? You could not have stolen his body because it looked like his body was there and it just went disappeared. The linens are still there. John's starting to get it. He's going, oh my. Oh my. That's right. Did he say that? And if you remember, then Mary comes back. She hadn't got it. He says, where did you take him? Let me. She hadn't realized it either. Where did you take him? Tell me before I can go to take care of his body. <laughs> and the angel said, he's not here. And do you remember he, and then Jesus speaks to her, who are you looking for? And then he says, Mary. And what does she say? Oh, my goodness. That's the Messiah, Rabboni. Woo! He's alive. Matter of fact, can you see it almost? She, I imagine because of what, how the scripture says, she probably went up and grabbed and fell at his feet and grabbed his legs. He says, don't touch me yet. I haven't ascended to the Father. What's my point this morning? My point is that just, well, let me, say, let me put it, rephrase that, rephrase this. I was about to say we. Sometimes I forget that he has risen and I don't see him. And you know what? He's right there with us in all that goes on in our life, in the struggles that we go through, and when we fall down and make mistakes, sin, when we're disappointed, he says, I'm right here. I'm the risen Christ. I love you. I care about you. I've gone through everything that you've gone through. And all we have to do is open our eyes and see him. And his Holy Spirit's there to say, I'm going to help you get through this. You're not alone. That's what Easter is all about. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Would you bow your heads with me? Lord, I am so thankful that that, that tomb is empty. That you are here with us. Lord, help us to get out of the fog. And when we're in it, help us to turn our, our focus and our eyes towards you. To give us direction. To give us strength. To bring about healing. Lord, to lift us up out of the miry clay that you have given us hope, mercy, grace, forgiveness, and salvation because of your resurrection. Lord, help us to see it not only on Easter, but each and every day of our life to know that you, the risen Lord, is with us. In your most powerful and precious name, I pray. Amen. We're about to take in communion, as we say, every Sunday.
in here. Our communion table is open to all who are believers in Jesus Christ and welcome to come to this table. I would invite our communion stewards if you would come at this time and then after and then we'll have our musicians and our our tech people come and and take communion first. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. And we have not loved our neighbor and not heard the cry of the least, the last, and the lost. Father, forgive us, I pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night Jesus was given up over to suffering and death, he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and gave it to his disciples. Take eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and blessed it and said, This, drink of this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, as we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we partake in the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and proclaim his death until he comes again. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Holy Spirit, consecrate this bread and this, this, this juice to be for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, making us one with Christ, one with each other and one in service to all the world as we live and pray. Amen. Worship team, would you come? Stephen, the blood of Christ shed for you, my friend. Chaplain, the blood of Christ shed for you. Love, the blood of Christ shed for you, my friend. Claire, the blood of Christ shed for you. 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 Jerry, the blood of Christ shed for you. 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 Blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Stood in over the Christ shed for you. The emblem the blood of Christ shed for you. suffering and shame. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And I love the blood of Christ shed that for you, old friend. cross Telling where the, the dearest and blessed the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ for a world of lost sinners was shed. Shame. Tina, the blood of Christ shed for you. So I'll cherish the, blood of Christ the old rugged cross. Till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross. The blood of Christ and exchange it someday for a crown. The blood of Christ shed for you. Oh, the old 
rugged the blood cross, of Christ shed for you. so despised the by the world as a wondrous attraction to me. The blood of Christ shed for you. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory the blood of above Christ shed for you. to bear it the blood of Christ shed on dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a On the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty. The blood of Christ shed for you. What was on that old cross? The blood of Christ suffered and died to pardon shed for you and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the, you. the old the blood, the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Till my trophies the blood at last I lay down. down. The blood of Christ will cling I will cling to the old rugged the blood of shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And exchange it someday for you. For To the old rugged cross, the blood of Christ shed for you. I will let the blessing of ever be true. It's shame and you. reproach glad be there. Then he'll you. call the me someday you, sir. to Why my I'm home the blood of far shed for away, you. where his the glory forever I'll share. Pastor. Of Christ, so I'll you. cherish the old blood of Addison, the blood of Christ shed for you till there my trophies at last I lay down. Benjamin, the blood of Christ, I will cling to the old blood of cross, the blood of Christ shed for you, and exchange it some the blood of Christ for us. Sing that chorus with us if you know it. The blood of Christ shed for you. <laughs> the blood of Christ shed for you. Cherish the old rugged cross. The blood of Christ. Till my trophies at last I lay down. The blood of Christ shed for you. And I will cling to the old rugged cross. Change it someday for a crown. One more time. Amen. One more time. One more verse. On a hill far away, thank you. Stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was changed. Everybody. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Amen. Amen.
I hope and pray that you have felt the Spirit of God in this place today. And then as you leave, that you will leave and living and believing that he has risen and risen indeed. And people will see it in your life and our life as we go into the world. Because this world needs light and hope and salvation. I just thank you that for this time that we've come together to lift up his name. Amen. Amen. I wanted to say something about this last song we're singing today. Uh, Mark, when he was talking about people getting lost in the Pentagon, reminded me of this. I had the privilege when I was in the Pentagon of hosting Kristen and Keith Getty there and giving them a tour and taking them to several of the worship services that were being held in the Pentagon Chapel and other places in the near area. Uh, Kristen is a wonderful singer, and Keith, her husband, got together with two Stown, uh, Stu Townsend, and they wrote this song. And as we sing it today, I want you to closely listen to the lyrics that they wrote because it's one of the richest theologies you'll ever find in a song anywhere. Our hope of a resurrection is in one place, in one place alone. That's in Christ alone. You won't hear words in this song about people's wealth or how much they support charity. You won't hear words in this song about your works or anything that you have done on life. It is only in Christ and Christ alone that we have this hope. Sing it with us and listen to these words. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all here in the love of christ i stand
In Christ alone, he is risen, risen indeed. Happy Easter. God bless you. May the Lord Christ meet you. Thank you.